Hey, what's up? What's up? Just finished watching some badass Vin Diesel movies. Now, I'm not calling myself a badass myself, but I mean, like, you know, I, I got a... I got a few moves up my sleeve. But Vin Diesel's a very interesting guy. You know, known for the movies such as Triple X or uh, Fast and Furious or Riddick. But when I was younger, there was a very specific Vin Diesel movie. And for some reason, it was the only movie we freaking owned. So let's put everything into perspective. When I was a child, I never really owned any gaming consoles. The first console I owned was a PlayStation 2. And that was like when I was already past the point of all the cool Nintendo games, the Game Boys, the DSs, all the cool stuff that I missed out on. And there was a point in time where we didn't even have cable. So no games and no TV. Yet there was one DVD that we owned and we had a DVD player and this movie played on repeat every single day 24 7 for probably roughly two weeks and I honestly forgot about this movie until recently I just kind of pushed it in the back of my mind just like hoping I didn't remember it a movie where a hard badass Vin Diesel military bro has to take care of a bunch of children and the concept itself just sounds like the most generic bullshit trailer Jade Wolf is a badass military man been in the military since he was eight years old knows the best at all fighting styles basically as badass as they come but shade wolf has to babysit children and he's gonna find out that babysitting children isn't so easy vid diesel in the pacifier and honestly when i first booted up this movie to re-watch it to do this video i didn't really expect to do a video on it i was just kind of like eh, maybe i could you know it's something that i watched all the time when i was a kid but maybe it's not that bad and maybe i just you know don't have much to say about it but then i told myself um the only reason this movie was on repeat was not because it was a good movie it was because it's the only movie we own. Because this movie is very bad. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's some decent moments here and there, but this movie just feels like it was just thrown together. Like, things happen, but it doesn't really make sense why things are happening. So the movie starts out with Shane Wolf getting his squad ready for a badass rescue mission. The enemy has a boat, four jet skis, and a chopper. Why? <laughs> Why does the enemy have four jet skis and a chopper? Holy shit, they really do have four jet skis and a chopper. So there's a speedboat, four jet skis, and a chopper, yet they are just underwater scuba diving and somehow have are catching up to a helicopter can anyone explain that to me like they said they would drop them off at radar range which i assume is further than their line of sight so they would have to catch up to them probably miles miles away from just swimming underwater they're swimming faster than a helicopter four jet skis and a speedboat okay we'll just forget that part let's just move on so shane wolf shoots a spark bullet i guess it electrocuted the boat and it shot sparks everywhere so it freaked everybody out and then the mission commences Wait a second. Wait a second. What happened to the jet skis and the helicopter? Vin Diesel just pops his head out of the water, takes off his mask, just chilling there. What happened to the four jet skis twirling around in the helicopter above with the freaking sniper rifle? He would have he would have died instantly. But anyway, he throws a bunch of grenades on the ship, kills a bunch of people. Epic, epic, badass things are happening. Okay, this is why I love these stupid action movies. Like, didn't they have guns? Why are they just like twirling around? One dude falls off, the other two guys just fucking ram into each other. Did they just forget how to drive a jet ski? Like, Vin Diesel's character isn't doing anything. He's just driving a jet ski. And they're just like, whoa, whoa, oh, oh god. Whoa. 
Oh, with the barrel roll, baby. He couldn't have just jumped off of it. He had to add a little barrel roll, dude. I love this. I changed my mind. I love this movie. I just, from this beginning part, best movie ever. So they saved the dude, mission complete. Nothing in that mission made any sense, but they did it. Good job. Hey, <laughs> these are my kids. You'd like them, they're really great. I doubt it. Oh, little does Shane Wolf know he's gonna have to take care of them kids soon. I always thought this part was so stupid even as a kid because it's like he just got kidnapped and he just got saved. Wouldn't his first priority is getting home, not being like, ah, hey, check out my kids. I got a couple more pictures. You you want to spend like 10 minutes checking out my kids? Give us another sec. Professor! No! No, Professor! Why did you spend so long looking at your picture of your kids, you idiot? So anyway, the guy that he saved ends up dying and Shane Wolf gets shot. But like the badass he is. He survived the bullet wound. So then we find out the whole reason the professor was important is we created a program called Ghost, and I guess it makes it to where a country can't launch any missiles or nukes, which um, makes absolutely zero sense. But, you know, it's a movie, whatever. So the big goal in this movie is to find that program. So then his captain tells him of a mission that he has to do. But it ain't no regular mission. It ain't gonna be a mission requiring a team. It's gonna be... A babysitting mission? What, the, what? Whoever killed her husband must think that Ghost is still in that house. A safety deposit box has been discovered in Zurich in the plumber's name, and I've been assigned to escort Mrs. Plumber there to retrieve the contents. In the meantime, someone needs to watch over those kids. That's where you come in. So here's where the movie just goes straight downhill from here on out. So he goes to the house, and his two goals, find the program, but the problem with this is he just straight up acts like their dad. Like the moment he walks in, he acts like a dad. Like you would think he would gradually work himself up to like being more of a dad figure, but he's just like straight up, I'm the dad, you listen to me kind of thing. It looks like Shade Wolf's out of his element. <laughs> and then we meet the kids. The little one whose only purpose is just to ruin things, the really loud one, the annoying whiny teenage girl, and the annoying edgy emo kid. You know, kind of just the generic lineup of children. I've dealt with- ah! Oh my god! I'm sorry. That's scary. Oh yeah, uh, there's a duck. I guess it's supposed to be for comedic relief, but he's kind of just there like he just randomly jumps in and just bites for no reason i guess it's supposed to be funny so anyway julie tells him that there was a break-in like a week ago and so he goes outside and like sets up a bunch of cameras with you guessed it you guessed it ladies and gentlemen i already know what you're thinking all right the past three movies what has happened the past three goddamn movies i reviewed what has happened smash mouth montage that's right ladies and gentlemen there is something about smash mouth and 2000s movies that just line up and it's the freaking average ordinary superhero song that played in zoom that played in in in, in, in master of disguise like what it, i don't know what is with that song but smash mouth montages dominated the 2000s I don't know why you know and I'm tired of not having music for montages so I'm going to make my own montage 2000 songs so I could play it over the montages for you guys so it's stuff really cool a montage is really cool 2000s are so really cool so after that badass montage, the mom leaves. She says she's going to be gone for two days, and uh, she's going to try to get access to a safe or something like that that her husband had. I'll be back in 48 hours, okay? You're only going to wait for a few days. Yeah, only a few days, <laughs> right? She's gone for longer. Okay, like, I know it's stupid for him to even react like that, but if in his mind there's actually bullets going off and there is a child being killed, 
Don't you think it would make your pace a little bit faster than a brisk walk? Because they portrayed this scene like, oh no, he's a military guy. He hears bullets and instantly thinks that someone's getting shot. Just briskly walking over there. Oh, a child's getting shot. Better check it out. So then all hell breaks loose. Basically, um, for some reason, uh, the child's standing in a fish tank throwing cereal around, which what child does that and that's basically what that kid is used for is just he destroys things that's basically it uh oh it looks like someone's about to break in what's the problem man get off here oh my god no what are you doing you spaz with my boyfriend but it turns out it's just a whiny teenage girl's boyfriend so the neighbors get angry and then the boyfriend talks like a complete idiot oh, fool. Handle me like that again, and I'll be forced to lay knuckles upside your head. Like, who talks like that? Even in the 2000s. Yo, I'm about to lay knuckles upside your head. This is where another complaint comes in. I get it, you know, like, Shane Wolf is military, military, military all the time. But it, it's so overbearingly military, it just gets annoying. Like, instead of, like, telling the kid, you know, scram, get off my yard, or whatever like that, he tells them to do 20 push-ups. Give me 20. I meant push-ups. No, he'll probably never speak to me. Then I did you a favor. Whoa! Your mother was worried sick about you. You should call her and tell her the truth. So then he starts parenting the girl and like telling her to call her mother and stuff like that. And this is what I find weird is he starts parenting so quick. Like there's no like character development of parenting. Like you think a big military guy wouldn't be a parental type figure and then he does some more military stuff where he wakes everybody up at 6 a.m you know that whole spiel so he gives them all these tracking devices and basically he tells them if you are using the button for it you better be in trouble like life danger trouble and obviously there's going to be some quirky funny moments with that i'm gonna have time to remember all of your names you'll be red leader Red baby, red one. Why is it so hard to remember names? Like, this is what I'm talking about. The military stuff is overbearing. Like, obviously he could remember their names. But after Shane busts down a door with this massive leg. What have you done? The two older kids decide he needs to go. You know I would never ask you for your help. But he has got to go. And what better way to get rid of a beefy ass military guy than... Putting oil on stairs? Right, here he comes. Is this Home Alone? Are, are we watching Home Alone? What? Like, just think about it. What is that gonna do? Oh boy, he hurt his leg. Like, he, he's still gonna be here. That's why I don't understand this point. But then the old nanny stops him and then she ends up being the one who falls down the stairs. <laughs> Then we cut to the mom and literally their only reason for staying there so long is because they can't figure out a password. Just as soon as you provide us with uh, the passwords. Passwords? It was your husband's wish that the person who comes and collects the box must provide us with the passwords. Great. And that's basically what they do the whole time is try to figure out the password. But then after getting thrown down the stairs, the old nanny decides she's going to leave. I quit. That makes me come. So then they have a little scramble and then she gets away. Red leader. I don't even know how to change a diaper. And then he finds out that taking care of children isn't so easy. Then more over the top military stuff. He gives them MREs for breakfast. Bro, just just get McDonald's. Like, like get, order some food. Like, it's not like he has to cook. Does he prefer that over regular food? And so he gets a call from the vice principal and it says that the two older kids need to get to school or they'll be suspended. And so he packs up a bunch of kid stuff in like a military outfit. So he gets the kids to school on time by driving like a maniac. What are you doing? Sorry, by that I mean driving epic. Then we get to meet one of my least favorite characters in this movie, 
asshole vice principal because all he is in this movie is just a giant asshole for absolutely no reason. Like, I know he's supposed to be like the bad guy, you know, like the, the, the conflict in this, but he's literally a vice principal who just bullies children. All right, you know what, Creeper? You just bought yourself an extra 15 minutes on the mats with the Merninator. So after he's a dick for a little bit, we get to meet the principal. And what do you know? There's a romance in this movie. Like, you know, there's gotta be, right? She also told me you're a teams guy. Yes, I am. Wow. Petty Officer Third Class Claire Fletcher at your service. And she's in the military as well? Wow! Wowie zowie! What a coincidence! So anyway, he sticks around at the school and keeps an eye on the kids. And his version of keeping an eye on the kids is a grown man at a playground with 10-year-olds at a high school with binoculars. There's a little bit of a weirdness in that, don't you think? Oh yeah, and the binoculars are uh, looking at cheerleaders. Like there's so much wrong with this moment in the movie. Obviously back then I didn't really think about the weirdness of that, but just a grown man, you know, sitting there with binoculars staring at high school cheerleaders. Little bit strange. And all of a sudden we cut to the edgy teenager getting bullied by the wrestling team. And then he goes to help him. And then the vice principal cuts in and just calls them names and is just a dick. You know, the naked streets of Bethesda could be so dark and dangerous. Right, Creeper? But uh-oh, someone pressed their wristband thing. There must be a big emergency. I hope nothing funny, doopy, poopy, whoopy happens here. I guess that's just okay. I mean, literally the people behind him are all focusing on the vehicle and not focusing on the dude who just drove through a wall. Like you would think in this situation, everyone would be like up in his face. Like, what the hell are you doing? Like, why are you doing this? Anyway, he goes down to poopy doopy land. That's secret talk for the sewer. Ha ha, like I said. Poopy doopy. Then after he takes a shower to get the poopy whoopy off of him, he walks around the house in a towel. You know, it's not my house. I wouldn't be walking around raiding the fridge when it's not even my house and just a towel. And then there's just like an awkward thing of like, you know, little girls. <laughs> all right, ladies, here's how it's gonna be. So now all of a sudden uh, he acts as their den mother and takes them to sell cookies. The door opens the other way. It, it's not like they can't get out. Also, there's windows. Uh, there's plenty of other things they can get out of the house with. This just doesn't make sense in context of the movie. He's trying to protect these children from people breaking into the house and killing them. Yet, he's just going to take the, the little kids to go sell cookies and just leave the, the older children there to do what they want. Like, there's no one watching him. There's no one doing anything. Like, they could just walk right out and be fine. This just doesn't make any sense with this movie at all that he's doing this. And then what proceeds is just so goddamn stupid. They had like this standoff thing where like the boy scouts come in and just bully the shit out of the kids, step on their cookies and like throw their table over. How are we supposed to sell raffle tickets? At this place reeks of your skanky cookies. Like these little kids call them skanks. They're 10 years old and they're calling them skanks. What is this part of the movie? So then they go back home and there is just a raging party. Like we're talking hundreds upon hundreds of teenagers. They've only been gone for like three hours tops. Who the hell did they call? How they get this party going in like three hours? It's not like they could have predicted that Shane would have taken them to get cookies. Like this makes absolutely zero sense. Party's over. Oh my God, it's here. Oh my God, it's here. What did you expect? That he would leave all night? That he would just dip in? Why would you not expect him to come back home? He was taking little children to fucking sell cookies. And it gets even dumber, okay? Not only was there a spur of the moment 300 person party, but he forces the teenagers to clean the house. How the fuck did he do that? You, you want to know what all teenagers would have done? They would have ran. They would have just left. It, it didn't matter how much of a badass he is. Teenagers can just run. And I know, I know you're probably tired of hearing me say this, but it gets 
dumber. While everybody's cleaning, one girl is putting up CDs and he happens to walk by her while he sees a burnt disc that says ghost on it. There are two ninja just chilling behind him in the window where they could see it. Many questions. Why is the alarm going off? Why is he holding up the disc like this out where the wind people outside the window can see it? Three. Why is the alarm not going off? Didn't he just completely surround the perimeter with monitors and shit? You call those people your friends? They have no respect for you. They have no respect for your home. You have no respect for yourself. You get her. You fucking get her, Shane. You tell her what's up. So why don't you just leave us alone? Don't worry, when your mom comes back, I'm gone. <laughs> Run, take the babies! Oh, we're getting an action scene, baby. And I'll admit this action scene ain't bad. It's got some good moments. It's got some good choreography to it. I, I still like this part. They did a good job of like implementing all of the kid toys and items into the fight. I think they did a pretty good job with it, honestly. For the fight, they were all like, get out of here. We hate you. Fuck you, man. But after the fight, they're like, oh my God, we actually need this dude around. Zach, what did they want? What do they want? So honestly, I think this entire scene was pretty good. It kind of gave all the children a reality check and made them realize that they are actually in danger. So kudos to that part. But then they find out that the burnt disc that says ghost on it was actually just the movie Ghost. So moving on from that moment, we find out that Zoe's a bad driver. Oh my God, there's a beat. There's, there's no beat. beat. There's no beat. There's no beat. There's no beat. There's no beat. And I guess to show the principal that she wrecked the car, she's just carrying a piece of the car inside. Seth! Okay, take off the hat. Look at that. That's how we showed up for practice today. What's wrong with blonde hair? What's wrong with dyeing your hair? And that's not all. I was doing a little recon in his locker and I found this. Okay, all right. That, uh, I, I was not, a, I would, that, that's not what I was expecting to happen. I, I don't remember the swastika when I was a child. I watched this movie many times and I don't remember this. Now I guess the blonde hair makes it a little bit worse. <laughs> Moving on. This is not normal. We're very concerned. I'm sure this is about their father. We've tried to get Seth and Zoe to talk to the school psychologist, but they won't. I'm sure it's about their father dying. Like what? Is that what happens when someone's father's died? They're just, you know what? My dad's dead. I'm gonna be a Nazi now. Why would you join the wrestling team if you hate it? Why would you join the wrestling team if you hate it? I mean, another question would be, hey, why do you have a Nazi symbol? You know, like, why do you have a swastika armband? You know, that's a little bit more important than asking about the wrestling team. Hey, just a quick thing. Uh, I just started to notice this. How come every single character can take off their armband? Like, wouldn't it kind of be bad if they are able to do that? Wasn't the whole point of the armband just like, you know, to stay on them in case they're in trouble? Why did, why can they just easily take it off? They're teenagers. Like you would think, you know, him being a big old military guy that he would make sure it can't come off or like it's locked by a key or something. I don't know. So Shane ends up chasing him down to a sketchy alleyway and a bunch of bros are wearing the swastika on their arm. And then we find out he's doing the sound of music. He's in a musical. So a lot of it makes more sense. So he ends up dropping the girl and then the director just goes batshit crazy and quits. Obviously I quit. Exeunt. Stage right. So then Shane and him have a little heartfelt moment and Shane's like, you do you, kid. You know, you're pretty good at this. You keep keep doing you, you know? Come here. Forget about everyone else for a second. Just performing what makes you happy. Yeah, more than anything. And then the heartfelt good scene moment just gets destroyed and ruined. Because all of a sudden, he's gonna direct the musical? And his reasoning for directing a musical is because like, I've directed countless military missions. I've directed um, 
my teams to go capture and and kill people. I I it's the same shit. Same shit as a musical. I've directed rescue missions all around the world. Directed numerous snatch and grabs from countries whose names you are not allowed to know. I've choreographed multi-pronged amphibious landings and stealth air attacks. So on top of protecting the children from ninjas trying to kill them, uh, he's going to direct a musical? Doesn't that just go against everything he's doing? Like all of this extra stuff doesn't make sense. Like it would, it would make more sense if he's like, hey, why don't you direct the musical? You know, why didn't he tell Seth to direct the musical. That would make a lot more sense, you know? So then we get to the panda dance scene, and I know this scene seems unimportant, where he like does the little panda dance and sings a song for the little kid for him to go to sleep, but uh, it's important later on. Floor, and you think that you ain't got a chance. Boom, boom. Don't make a move till you're in the groove. Moving on to the next scene, now he's gonna teach Zoe how to drive. And right after she crashed the student driver vehicle, he's going to let her drive a van full of a baby and a bunch of children. How incredibly stupid is that? She just finished wrecking a car and you're gonna let her drive a vehicle full of kids. Why don't you drop the- They almost get T-boned by a garbage truck. Seth ends up quitting the wrestling team and then, you know, the big vice principal dude kind of just bullies the shit out of him and was like stepping up to the kid like, yo, you want to go? You think you're a tough boy, don't you? Want to shave the tiger? Do ya? You want a fifty-year-old man to 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 throw you on the ground? So then Shane sets up a wrestling match after school, and they're handing out handwritten flyers. I mean, obviously Shane wins. He just kind of like just embarrasses the vice principal, and you know, yay, we got him, guys. So something I found really strange about this scene, so no one's really holding any signs. Yet for some weird reason, when they cut to Seth in the audience, there's just a random person holding a cardboard sign that just has John 316 written on it. Like you think they would have signs that say like, go Shane or beat his ass or something like that, right? But they just awkwardly placed a cardboard sign that says John 316 on it. Because it's not like that sign's there by accident. They put it there for some reason and I just don't know why. But it is the best part of the movie and you wanna know why it's the best part of the movie? The pacifier! <laughs> It's the name of the movie. He said the name of the movie. We did it, guys. We did it. We won. And also, I would just like to mention, how is putting someone arm like this painful? Because this is this is what he was doing. Like this is like he had his arm like this or something like that. It, how is how is this painful? And then we get another two thousands pop punk montage. Kick it. Two thousands are really cool. Scout self-defense karate stuff. Uh, he teaches Zoe how to drive and he directs a musical. Just <laughs> Shane, how do you do it? How do you do it, Shane? How do you do it? So all the loose ends start getting tied up. All the kids start feeling better and doing better. And then we cut to the mom who finally figures out the password. And you want to know what the password was? I'm so stupid. Is it my angel? Yes, it is indeed. It was engraved on her ring? You're telling me you spent two weeks trying to find the password and your ring? That, that, that took two weeks to think of? So then they finally open up the safe and it's apparently a key to like a vault. And the vault is at the home. So then Shane finds the vault at the house. mom comes home they have a cheesy little happy moment <laughs> kisses everywhere so he takes the captain to the vault and on the way there we find out that it was the neighbors the neighbors were the ninjas the whole time now 
What? It was, what? The captain's, the ca it's, excuse me, it was the captain, of, what a twist. What a twist, it was the captain all along. So while Shane's knocked out, they tie up the kids and bring the mom down to the vault with them. And then the Asian lady's eyebrows got burned off. <laughs> Why didn't she back up? You know, if there's two flamethrowers shooting at my face, my first instinct isn't, hey, I'm just gonna stand here and let it happen. Then the kids end up beating a grown man by themselves by squirting apple juice in his eyes, tripping him, and then kicking him in the balls. I don't know about you guys, but apple juice in the eye, I mean, that's, that's not really gonna affect him. Getting tripped, that's not really gonna affect him. I, I don't know. Plot armor, I guess. So then Zoe drives off to get help while the other Asian guy tries to chase him down in a vehicle. Then Zoe attracts a bunch of cops to follow her because she's gonna round about and bring him back to her house so hopefully the cops can help. So then Shane goes down to the vault and lo and behold, what is the secret method of getting to the vault? But the Peter Panda dance. Oh, it's all coming together. Oh, it's just a big circle. It's all working. Crap. Three steps forward, one step back. What if the dad messed up one day? You know, like what if, what if he came home, wanted to grab the ghost for some reason, and just fucked up? You know, like he tripped, or maybe he just had an off day and and forgot a step. He would get stabbed, like he would die. It, you know, like just seems a little bit overkill. You know, I don't know. It just seems a little bit ridiculous. But then Shane loses the fight and then the captain gets the gun. What is he gonna do now? Last word, Shane. Say goodnight, Peter Panda. Look, I know I'm adding a bunch of what ifs in here, but you know, how did he know that it was gonna open strong enough to knock him out? Okay, okay, I know I'm a nitpicky YouTuber. I get it, okay? I nitpick, that's what I do, okay? Well, it looks like they're home free. Oh, wait! I want the ghost. It looks like they're screwed now. Hurry now! <laughs> oh, thank God the duck ended up biting his ball sack. <laughs> Couldn't let you have all the fun. Ooh, that was... That was that was bad. I hated that. I hated that one-liner. I, I hated that so much. I'll live happily ever after. Shane decides to stop being in the military and ends up moving down there. Now, obviously, you are here to find out the answer of was this movie good? And boy, it was way worse. Way worse than I ever imagined it was. I thought it was good back then, you know, child me. But there was just, there's so many issues, there's so many plot holes, there's so many problems in the movie that just doesn't make sense. I mean, it's a 2000s movie. It's just one of those films that you kind of just mind-numbingly watch. But all in all, it's like a three to a four out of 10 type movie. But thank you everyone for watching this movie. If you're new here and you enjoyed it, please subscribe. I make videos like this all the time. And we are close to 60K followers on Twitter. So please follow me on Twitter. I've been sitting underneath 60K for like three years. Please follow me. Give me your validation, I need it. But thanks once again, and I'll see you in the next one.